Hey guys and welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to kind of go over the thought process um, that you should go through before you start to code a program. I'm specifically going to target a class project I had called Wall because um, it can be a little tricky. So basically the whole point of Wall, in case you're not re watching this from my class, um, is that you have to draw a wall from the bottom up um, and you have to draw uh, the wall so it has a specific number of rows. That rows is going to be um, gotten from uh, input from the user. Um, if that if the number of rows is below one or more than twenty, then it should not draw the wall and it should uh, clear the the input field so the user can retype in a valid response. But if it is within 1 and 20 then it needs to draw that number of rows um, and then every other row should be indented so it kind of looks like a brick wall um, if you would so there you go that's what you need to do so you probably what you need to do when you do programming um, you should do it in a top to bottom thinking or top down um, what that means is you kind of think of what you really need to do and then you kind of go into all the little things that each thing does. So in this case, we need to, if you think about it, what are you doing? What are we accomplishing with this project? We're going to draw a wall. Okay? So let's call it draw a wall, right? So that's the number one thing we're going to do. Okay, so inside a draw wall, what, what, what do you typically do? We know that we need to have... Um, kind of like an even row and an odd row. So if you draw a wall, um, this is kind of the, this is going to be the thinking method that you should go to when you're planning. It. No coding. If you're thinking in coding, you're doing this wrong at this point. So when you, whenever you draw a wall or you build a wall, you need to, um, you need to, you need to draw your rows. Well, if we just had the same row for each thing, we could just do draw row but we don't. We have an even row and then we have a an odd row. So because we have to have, you know, a row um, a row indented each time. So they have to be a little bit different. Um, so once you have that down, well what does each row do? When we draw a row, we just what is that compromised of? Well, we draw a brick, right? Cuz you got to draw a brick to draw a row and then you have to draw the rows to draw a wall. So that's kind of top-down thinking. So now we know what we need to do. So we have this draw wall is our top thing we need to accomplish. If you look at it, then we have a draw row even and a draw row odd. Okay, and then we just draw bricks. That's kind of top-down thinking. So you should always start at the top and program that and then go down. Okay, so now that we kind of have, this is a very simple flow, obviously. Um, and it's a little, it's not as, it's not like a flow chart by any means for programming because um, that's, a, that's a little bit more in depth. This is just what the thinking should be behind everything. Okay. So inside of our thing, I, like I said, I'm not going to be programming at all in this uh, tutorial. I'm literally just going to show you kind of what we need to do. So when we draw a wall, what do we need to know? Okay. So when we draw a wall, what do we need to know? We need to know... We need to know um, how many rows. So I'll put that down below. How many rows? Okay. So there we go. Then when we draw row, I guess what we could do is, uh, yeah, draw row even. And then what do we need to know? Can we even draw this row? All right. So, and then where to start the row? Those are the two things we need to know when we when we do a draw row even, and I'll um, and then we'll, we'll put draw row odd here as well, and we'll just put ditto because we need to know the same thing. Because we need to know can we are we allowed to draw an even row this time around, or do we need to draw an odd row? You know. And where do we start that row? Because obviously when you're building a wall, you have to um, 
So let's say our wall, this is our floor for our wall, okay? And then say, all right, so now we got to build our wall. Well, the first place we should put our brick is we should put it right over here, typically on the bottom, because we can't really build a wall out of thin air at the top. We have to draw at the bottom. And, you know, for this case, we'll just start left to right. So our first, you know, where are we going to start the row? Well, we're going to start it right here at, like, position zero all the way on the left side, okay? So we're at position zero. Well, once we draw, you know, this this row here and we're all done, we need to draw, you know, this was even row. So once we're done drawing the even row, you know, we need to say, okay, we're done drawing the even row. Now we draw the odd row. So then I'll go here and it says, you know, what do we need? Can we draw the odd row? Yeah, we can. So we're on the odd row. Where do we start the row? Well, if you think about it, okay. So we just had like a... Uh, Alrighty, so that was our, our row we just drew there. Um, so where do we need to start our second row? Well, typically, you know, our we need to build a kind of a, a wall like this. So if you think about it, okay, where do we need to start this row? Well, in my head, I'm going to say, well, we need to start right here, right? Well, that's going to be a little weird, because if we start right here, then this is going to be kind of our wall, right? Right here we got this gap over here on the left so we need to start the row kind of like I don't know half of the brick width um, or the brick width divided by two I guess you could say because the brick width which would be let's say this is a hundred divided by two fifty so instead of starting at zero right here we start at fifty well we don't want to do that we want to still have this part of the gap so what you can do then so let's say you have right now you you're starting at half of a brick width well, if you subtract that brick width, or that half of a brick width, minus a brick width, that moves us over a brick placement over here. So even though it's off the screen, we still draw the brick, and it would end up right here. So it would still show that half of a brick. So that's how you kind of fill in that gap there. So now we have the entire thing filled up. It's because we, we started our position at in between a brick, minus a brick, so it moved our... Uh, our starting point kind of off the screen but we still need that to happen otherwise you know it'll it'll be bad and then this brick right here oops is actually there but our screen ends right here you know so it'll have kind of a half of a brick hanging off half of a brick hanging off that's fine um, we don't need it to do anything more so that's kind of the logic behind, you know, can we draw this row, and where do we start the row. So once we get, you know, that's all, like, programming-wise, you're going to set some integers, do a couple math, um, division things like that. You're going to have to, you know, stuff like that. But that's all in math. So then, what do we do here? So, well, when we, when we do this, though, um, let's go ahead and we need to do our how many rows, right? So, how do we do this? How many rows? Um, so, once we'll, well, the wall gets us how many rows, but how do we make this happen, how many rows, you know? And how do we determine whether or not if it's going to be even or odd? See how I haven't even touched the bricks yet? Like, how we're going to draw them or anything like that? But I'm just focusing on top down. So, at this point, I go, okay, well, I need two things right now. I need two things to be done. I need to know need to know what row should be executed okay and then um, so let's figure that out real quick so what row should be executed well we could probably um, um, have kind of a, a, a testing thing that says um, row to draw row to draw and uh, yeah, I know I said we're going to do programming but um, you know even right we're going to draw even so the first row we're going to draw is even and then then when even is done does row to draw equals odd okay not i mean yeah it's a little bit of programming there but you get my drift like it's not in the technical nitty-gritty this is you know stuff i have to know this is the basics so wait so i'm going to immediately start with even so it draws even so can we draw this row yeah we can and then and then when even is done, it does odd. 
and then it'll do odd. So we got it. We got where to start the row. We got, and then we got can we draw this row? Um, I think we only need one thing. So now we know, you know, which row to draw, um, and that's that's good. And then oh, I guess we did need two things. I forgot two things. And then we we need to know where to start the row um, Y position okay so this was X position now we need to know Y position okay so obviously you know Y position we let's say um, the Y position probably should be um, wherever because like I said we're drawing up at the bottom so z zero X obviously for this row um, and then this row here would be the X would be half of the brick minus a brick so it would be negative half of a brick technically um, so we'll just put that here X position equals half negative half of a brick okay and then this one X position equals zero, right? Because we're starting all the way over, and this will be odd brick, and this one will be even brick. Okay. So our expression there. So now we got that. Great. Now we need to know a few other things. Now we need to know our Y position. So here, our y position is pretty much um, whatever you, you know. If you know, you know draw, you, I mean, obviously you're going to think a little bit of programming when you do this. You know that the the x the or the the in, in any program zero zero is at the top left. Okay, so up here is zero zero. Okay, so this will, the x position will stay zero because we're never leaving this line. But when we go down, our y position goes great. So our y position if we think about okay where do we need to start this brick whenever we draw something it always starts at the top left okay so right up here in this little corner is where we're going to be starting our drawing so y position is going to be um, since so we're starting from the bottom it's going to be like the height of our app right minus the brick height okay and what that does is it gets the height of our app. So if our height is 200, let's say this is 200, and each brick is 50 height, well, it's to 200, so now it's down here, and our X position is 0, right? So X position 0, Y position 200, minus our brick height, which is 50, so it moves it up the brick height to 150, so right here. Okay, great. Now, this is our second brick, right? Okay, so this is going to be our starting position for our first row. Our second row is just going to be simply um, our Y position from previous row plus, or sorry, not plus, minus brick height. Because, like I said, it's, this would be plus if we were going top down, but we're going from the bottom up. Um, we're going to minus our brick height. So now for a, we were at 150 was our Y position. Now we need to make our Y position be mi minus a brick height. So it will be up here to 100, and it will start right here. So, you know, I haven't done any programming yet. This is all just, you know, thinking, 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 figuring all of this crap out. Um, so there we go, X position, Y position. So, and as you can see, so we need, no matter what we do, we have to have our Y position start out as the height of our app minus brick height. Um, then any other um, brick after that is just the Y position from previous row minus the brick height. So that will just keep moving it up and up and up and up and up. That's fine. So we got that down here. So we need to start, need to know, so first row equals our height of app minus brick position or brick height any other row equals our previous y position minus brick height okay here we go 
Um, so, and the only other thing is, um, so now we got those two things that we need to know there. Um, now, probably what you'll want to do is uh, right before your your draw row even and your draw row odd, you need to add some type of counter to you know see how many rows to draw you know. So we're going to take what we already know from our draw wall because our draw wall told us how many rows we need, and we're going to just add that. So um, you could do this multiple ways. Um, um, the way I like to do it is um, you could do it. Well, you could technically do it a lot of ways. Um, you could make it so you could you could have a counter. So you could say while while our rows is less than um, or, yeah while our rows or our row counter is less than rows inputted do the following okay so while our row counter is less than the rows inputted do the following okay so when we draw our first row um, when we draw our first row here um, what is our row count? So row count equals one, right? Then what happens here? Row count equals two, right? That's you know he does this over and over again. Well, if we need to draw five, what you could do? So every time you draw a row, you just start. Um, you just uh, you just add one to your row count, you know. So if I draw, an, if I need five, all right. So row count equals zero, right? And we need, and so if it's, and we have rows inputted five. So as long as row counter is less than f uh, rows inputted, do the following. So zero. Right now we haven't drawn anything. So zero less than five. Yeah. So draw the first row. Okay, one. Is one less than five? Yeah, it is. So we're going to keep doing it. We're going to draw a second one. So then it goes 2. It's 2 less than 5. And then we're going to have, yeah, 2 is less than 5. So now we draw, you know, 3. 3 less than 5. Um, yep. All right, so draw that one. So now it's at 4. Is 4 less than 5? Yep, okay. So draw another one. So now we're drawing our fifth row here. Whoa. Alright, so we drew our fifth row now. Um, and now our row our row count is set to five. Now it says, alright, well is five less than five? Nope. Okay, so now we're done drawing our rows. Okay. That's pretty simple. Now What's the only thing we have left to do? Okay, so we drew the rows. We figured out how we're going to draw the rows. We figured out how we're going to check how many rows to draw that we got from our up here. We, we found out how to implement that. I haven't done a single lick of programming yet. Obviously, I've used a lot of uh, critical thinking, which is associated with programming, but um, I haven't actually typed any bit of code. Um, so... As you can see here, um, the only other thing we need to do now is do our bricks. So now we just need to draw a brick, right? So every time we draw a brick, um, we have, as you can see here, when we draw a row, we draw a number of bricks. Typically, when you draw a number, or when you build bricks in real life, or you doing them in the program, you should draw enough bricks to fulfill your entire space, right? Um, you know, so your wall fills up the, the, the hole that you wish to fill. So, draw a brick. What do we need to know? Nothing. Um, I guess you can, uh, at this point, what do we need to know? We, we still need to know our Y position and X position, okay? Of where to start. So, the row needed to know that, um, and this is where, you know, when you actually start to program, you're probably like, okay, well, telling the row where the X and Y position is, is probably, you know, you don't have to necessarily uh, do anything with that. Um, so let's take a look here. Um, 
now we'll go ahead and look. Okay, so we're drawing a brick. Okay, so what do we need to know? And then brick width and brick height. It's also something we need to know. So, you know, we, we declared all that kind of stuff um, above in our programming, the stuff of what our brick width height and stuff like that. Um, so we'll go ahead and draw our brick now. Pretty much whenever we draw a brick, we just need to uh, we draw the brick at the Y position and X position given um, until we reach the end of our our application as we'll just put right now. Um, so um, what we could do is we could do um, while our um, and what, you know when you're going when you're looking at you're drawing the length y so you don't care about y at this point like we did when we were drawing the rows we care about the x position at this point so while x position is less than the app width do uh, draw a brick okay and then every time we draw a brick you know, so once we draw a brick one, so, you know, we started over here at our, um, you know, our X position, which was zero. Um, and then when we do an odd position, our X position is negative half of a brick. Wherever we start, depending on which row we're at, we need to, you know, once we're done drawing it, we need to move our X position over, right? Our Y position will stay the same. That changes with each row, right? So every time we draw a brick, we need to move the X position over. Alrighty, so what do we move it over by? Well, when you draw a brick, you should probably start the brick right next to the other brick over over brick width. Okay, so that makes sense. So if we're at 0x here, and we draw a brick that is 100 wide, right? And so we draw the brick, boom, boom, brick, done. Well, where should we start at x? Well, we need to start it at 100 now. So if we just add, so... So x position equals x position plus um, our brick, you know, brick uh, width. So our, you know, our previous x position. So obviously our first x position is going to be whatever we have it set to in our rows here. So every time we, you know, so inside of draw row even in programming wise, you'll set the x position to um, zero. In draw row odd, you'll set the x position to negative half of a brick. And you have to do, obviously, some math to go along with that to figure it out. Um, because typically, I mean, you could even, you know, set a variable to that. Uh, specifically, you could literally call make a variable called negative half of a brick and set that equal to, you know, a brick divided by 2 minus the brick length. But just saying. Um to help people out so you know once we get that so no matter what happens up here well then we get into our draw brick well okay so we get our starting position and then every time we draw a brick we need to move it over a little bit so that's where we get our x position so if it was zero plus our brick width well our brick width is an imaginary number of 100 or whatever so our x position becomes 100 then 200 then 300 then 400 then 500 600 700 well Remember, while our x position is less than app width, well, let's say our app width is like uh, 600, right? So it'll keep drawing it until x position is less than that. Well, okay, let's think of this. Okay, so we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, so it, right now we're at 500x, right? Is 500x position less than 600? Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay. So then we're going to draw another one. Then we'll be at 600 um, right here. And then it'll say, is 600 less than that? Then it'll, it'll say, no, no, it's not. Um, depending on whether or not your bricks, uh, the way you made your program, whether or not your width evenly divides into your um, program or into your width, depends on whether or not you need to do this. Sometimes you have to do, there's like a plus one or minus one error. Uh, it's a logical error that a lot of people encounter. Um, let's say our width was, 
you know, something odd or whatever. Um, and we ended up having like a partial brick be made or something like that. You know, you might have to add one or something like here, like, uh, you know, while our X position is less than ep app width and draw brick, it might be, you know, app width minus one or same thing with the height here. If you're missing a row or something like that, you just do the plus one minus one stuff. You'll figure that out when you write your program. That shouldn't be a part of your um, thought process because, you know, unless you're really, really good at what you're doing, but then you wouldn't be watching this video. So, all right. So then we just draw the brick and you move it over until, you know, our X position is greater than or equal to the app width. So that's pretty darn simple right there. So um, that's the logic behind it all. So now when you go to implement this into programming, um, you'll go, okay, well, when I draw something, that always has to happen in the paint method. Okay, so maybe my draw wall code should go inside of my paint method because it has to go back to that graphics um, G. Um, otherwise, it, you know, if you just made a draw wall method, you wouldn't be able to actually draw from there. And that's your root, you know. So you start there, and then you just start programming all the rest of this stuff. Um, you know, you'd have to obviously add like a JTEX field or something for the user to input um, how many rows they want. You're going to have to have something that executes the program. Um, but like I said, when we're doing, when we're when we need to figure out what our program needs to do should always do top to bottom thinking because um, if you start from the bottom if I started from okay well, like, let's look real quick at our just our draw the brick well if I drew a brick I'd be like okay um, X position Y position I mean I don't you know I need to know that stuff but how do I know it you know I I have to make up values for it Otherwise, or I'd be going, okay, I need to do this. Okay, so I did draw a brick. Okay, well, I need to know X position, Y position. But that depends on whether or not, you know, if it's an odd even, odd row or an, or an even row. So then you'd have to go back up there and start looking, programming a part of that. And then, you know, going all the way up to draw a wall. And that's that's not logical. It's, you know, you should never do bottom up thinking like that. Always do top down. That way, as you can see, I didn't have to go back to anything else. Okay. I didn't have to go change something in my rows when I draw my, when I drew my thing here. The only thing I might need to change every now and then is maybe just a little logical statement here and there once I'm drawing my program to make it work. But you have the gist of it down right there. So that's what I'm. I mean, a lot of people kind of when they go to make a program, they just kind of scatterbrain and they think they should do whatever you know, whenever, and just start programming, you know, and hopefully it works, you know. Well, then your code gets really messy, and you, you don't even know really what's going on, and then you, you, you don't know why it's not working, but if you, if you do this, then you can really just start programming where you need to start. That's draw wall, okay? And your draw wall needs to draw row even, draw row odd, take a look at it. Well, what do we need to know for draw wall? We know how many rows, so let's say you know, you, you, if this was a method, you maybe have draw wall and then int rows, right? So, or something like that. You never know. And then, and then rows would eventually go into here, like, um, you know, what did we say? Um, you know what row? You know, while our row counter is less than rows inputted, so while, you know, row counter is less than rows then, you know, draw even. How do we know whether it's even or not? Then, as you can see, um, what do we say? Row to draw even, row to draw. So you know, typically for that, maybe you do like a switch, and then you do row to draw, as you can see there, and then case, um, case even, then you, you know, draw that, and then you break, obviously, and then here, you know, in case, odd and then you'd break you get my you get my point though like you can easily take what you kind of thought about and easily bring it into um, you know here and so you know you just add it so once you get this part down you can easily program it programming is literally like 95% like critical thinking getting the whole portion of the program down and then um, actually making the code is like the rest of the 5%. Um, sure, yeah, you need to know 
I mean, if you look at the frickin' Java API, it's like a bajillion words long. I mean, no one remembers all of that. You're not expected to. Um, once you get a little bit higher up, you probably get a, a Java, a little Java pocket guide to kind of give you very popular uh, method calls and stuff like that. But um, and a lot of it's just remembering over time. But like I said, um, as long as you can get the thought process down, um, you can easily. You can't Google how to draw or how to make a wall program in Java, but you can easily put like, all right, well, how do I um, make a counter in Java? You know, I can do that. That's simple. But the thought process, I can't Google. That's what the people pay you the big bucks for, being able to accomplish that critical thinking. So, but I just thought I'd give you guys a kind of a, a decent introduction to top-down thinking and how um, hopefully a more efficient way of um, starting a program will be because as you can see I mean a lot of programs now when you're just beginning they're simple you don't need to think about it a whole lot you can maybe think as you go but if you're about to make a 3,000 you know line program or let's say um, I have a team of 10 people well you know I need to be able to kind of understand how this program is going to flow before I can tell what people to do what things so alright hope that helps guys have a good one